ان الحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ان يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله اصره الله تعالى في الهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد ان اقول اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فسبحان الله حين تمسون وحين تصبحون وله الحمد في السماوات والارض وعشيا وحين تظهرون يخرج الحي من الميت ويخرج الميت من الحي ويحيي الارض بعد موتها وكذلك تخرجون ومن اياته ان خلقكم من تراب ثم اذا انتم بشر تنتشرون ومن اياته ان خلق لكم من انفسكم ازواجا لتسكنوا اليها وجعل بينكم موده ورحمه ان في ذلك لايات لقوم يتفكرون اللهم اجعلنا من قوم يتفكرون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي فالحمد لله I'd like to start this khutbah inshallah ta'ala by introducing you to a very beautiful surah of the Quran and that is surah al-rum the 30th surah of the Quran and it begins with a very famous incident this incident is well documented it's talked about a lot in the seer literature there were even scholars that wrote entire books dedicated to just this incident incident when uh, our scholars like the great early scholar Abu Bakr al-Baqillani wrote his book Ijaz al-Quran the miracle of the Quran the first miracle he documented was this one and it has to do with some interesting history at the time the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wasn't even a prophet yet he was in his 30s early 30s a war began between the persians and the romans the two superpowers of the time and they were struggling over territory in the middle you can call it the asia territory and some parts of the mediterranean this territory they were fighting over you can, modern day turkey would be included in that Sometimes the Romans would have the Romans would have control over it. Sometimes the Persians would have control over it. But for the, for a long time, the Romans had some upper hand. This war began when the Prophet Sallallahu was in his thirties, and it went on for about twelve years, for twelve years. And by the time we reach the middle forties of the Prophet's life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's been a prophet for about five years already. This is the fifth year after Risala. The Persians, the Iranis finally had a very decisive victory. They crushed the Roman armies. They, taught, they dominated, they took over multiple, multiple lands, including Jerusalem. Jerusalem by that time, because the Romans were Christian, the, they had made their religious capital Jerusalem. You know, and, and by that time, the, the, the Persians even invaded Jerusalem and, and, and dominated it. They almost waited all the way up to Constantinople, which was one of the great capitals of the Roman Empire. They didn't con conquer Constantinople, but they got up to, the, up to Istanbul. The news of that came to Mecca. Mecca, of course, the, Ara the Arabs are in the desert that is like it touches borders with all of these regions. So they get major news because of the trade. The trade that they do, they get the major news. And a very interesting thing happens. See, the people of Mecca who worshipped idols, they thought that they are similar to the people of Iran who also worship idols and they worship fire. And they thought that the Romans are similar to the Muslims because the Romans believe in prophets and revelation and a book, even though they're Christians. Whatever little they know about them is these are people of a book, and the Muslims appear to be people of a book also. So they took this almost as though it was the Olympics. And they said, ha, our team won and your team lost. You see that? <coughs> the people who believe in a book, they lost. And the people who worship fire and worship idols, they won. And they were using that even as a joke against the Muslims. At this time, you also have to keep in mind that the Muslims had not yet come into contact too much with the Christians. Muslims were only, the da'wah of Islam was more focused on the mushrikun of Makkah, the idol worshippers. This is important because 
we, the Muslims, had very good assumptions that when we finally do give da'wah to the Christians and we do give da'wah to the Jews, when we invite them to Islam, it's going to be very easy because they already know a book. They already know about these prophets and this Quran calls itself مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ You know, it confirms whatever came in previous revelations. So it's going to be an easy shift for them. It's not going to be a big deal for them to accept Islam. So they thought the hard community, the difficult community is going to be the Quraysh, the Makkans. But the people of the book are going to be easy. And again, keep in mind, they don't know any better yet. So they even think of the Christians and the Jews as future Muslims. They don't even think of them as another nation. They only think of them as future Muslims. This is something Allah Azza wa talks about eventually when the Muslims move to Medina. Are you just hopeful that they're going to accept everything you're saying? Is that what you're thinking? Allah even comments on that thinking that the Sahaba had, they were optimistic. But regardless, this, these ayat came down. These ayat comment on this world event that happens. The Romans, the Romans were dominated, they were overpowered. In the nearby land. In right the nearby land. And then Allah says, وَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ غَلَبِهِمْ سَيَغْلِبُونَ And even though they have been dominated, soon after that, they're going to be on top again. They're going to make a comeback. The Romans are going to make a comeback. Even the Romans didn't believe they were going to make a comeback. But Allah Azza wa revealed these ayat, and it became like a joke, a running joke among the Meccans. Oh really, your Quran says that the Romans are going to come back again? And they started placing bets. And again, bets were not haram yet. Betty was not haram yet. So Abu Bakr Siddiq said, of course, if Allah said they're going to win again, they're going to win again. So he placed a wager. And the Prophet when the ayat came, you know, fi bid'i sinin, bid'i in Arabic means three to nine. So between three years and nine years, the Romans are going to have a comeback. So Abu Bakr Siddiq made a, made a bet for three years. And Rasul told him, no, change it to nine years. Change it, because that's the maximum of bid'i. So he said, change it to nine years and add the number of camels. Make it a hundred camels. Go for it. Go all out. I'm all in. And so Allah called it between three and nine years, the Romans are going to have a comeback. But what was really interesting, on the day that the Romans win, the believers are going to be extremely happy. Now when you read that the day on which the Romans win, the Muslims are going to be extremely happy. You would think maybe they're going to be extremely happy because the Romans won and the word of Allah is fulfilled. The miracle is proven. The Quran's proof. The Quran's proof that it can, that Allah knows the future. This can only be from Allah is proven, and that's why they will be happy. But there's a secret to this ayah that we learn later on. In exactly nine years, in exactly nine years, now we're in the 14th year of the prophethood. The Romans did win, but at the same exact time, the Muslims defeated the Quraysh in Badr. So the Muslims were overjoyed. Allah said in the surah, on that day, Muslims are going to be extremely happy. And they're extremely happy not just because the Romans won, but actually because one of the greatest victories in Islam comes on the same, at the same exact time. But this is actually not the subject of my football review. The few minutes I have with you in introducing the surah to you is I want to share with you how beautifully Allah Azza wa Jal refers to this miracle, this amazing event, that from both points, one, the believers are going to have victory. Who would have thought in the fifth year of the Prophet's struggle, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they're going to be in battle against the Quraysh, and on top of that, they're going to win. You couldn't even imagine that situation. But Allah Azza wa Jal already predicted it. And this is a pretty amazing miracle. But Allah in this surah says, or teaches us, that you shouldn't just wait for those kinds of miracles to have Iman. That is an opportunity for you, for you to appreciate the wonders of Allah Azza wa Jal. But there are plenty of other things you should be appreciating all, all around you that are pretty amazing and miraculous. And so Allah uses this and He segues, He uses this in transition to talk about some of the things that we experience every day, but we're not amazed by them. We're just not amazed by them because we don't have the right attitude. So these ayat that I want to share with you, the ones I actually want to share with you, are the ayat in which Allah sets the attitude of a believer, and how is a believer supposed to be amazed by Allah Azza wa How are we supposed to be in awe of Allah? What are we supposed to look for all around us? Allah Azza wa says, فَسُبْحَانَ hina tumsuna wa hina SUBHANALLAH It could be a command. Declare the perfection of Allah. Declare the perfection of Allah at the time that you spend your evenings. 
say subhanallah, think about Allah, think about how great Allah is, and say that with your tongues in the time that you spend your evenings, hina tulsun, wa hina tusbihun, and in the mornings when you wake up. By the way, al-masa wa subh these two times of the day are the busy times of the day. That's when you get stuck in traffic. You know, this 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m., that hour, people are really, the, the streets are busy, business is busy, everything is busy, in the morning time, it's also busy time. And Allah says, there's a certain category of people I want you to be, that at the time when you are the most engrossed in dunya, that's when I want you to remember me. That's what I want you to do to speed. So if you and I want to apply this ayah, next time you're stuck in traffic, it's opportunity for to speed. It's opportunity to declare Allah's perfection. Next time you're stuck, stuck in traffic on the way back on the 635, in the speed of time. It's, it's time to remember Allah. SubhanAllah, Hina Tusun, Hina Tusbihun, Wa Lillahi Al-Hab, Wa Lahu Al-Hab, Wa Lahu Al-Hab, Fi Samawati Wa Al-Ard, Wa Ashiyan, Wa Hina Tuzhirun. And Allah alone, is, He's the only one that praise and gratitude belongs to. In the skies and the earth, whether you do it or not, it already belongs to Him, and only Him. And this even belongs to him in your downtime. I'm going to translate this as your downtime. Back in the day, Allah was Qaylula time. It was like the, the afternoon nap. We don't really have that in America unless you doze off in your office or something. You know, but it's not an official time where you pass out. I mean, Europeans still have that. A good part of Eastern Europe still has this concept where if you go to the office in the middle of the afternoon, the work will tell you, you know, I'm in my afternoon break right now. Can't help you. So see me in three hours. And the French will do that, they'll just sip their, sip, sip their tea and you know, dip their bread in it or, or whatever for like three, four hours, it's their afternoon downtime. That's part of their lifestyle. But this was something originally to the, with the Muslims also, and, and the Arabs also. In Bumar time, in the afternoon time, they would just, everything would shut down. There's a time to just relax, okay? And by the way, this was even the, even the case in ancient Egypt. That's why Musa alayhi salam, he came into the city at the time where everybody was knocked out in the middle of the afternoon. This is Haini Ghafna, when he saw the two people fighting. But that's a side issue. So Allah says, even at the time when you're resting, وَعَشِيَةٍ Late in the night. Of course, that's also the time when you're resting. Allah says, even at that time when nobody may be doing Alhamdulillah, very few of you should be doing, would be doing Alhamdulillah, even at that time, Hamd only belongs to Allah. So when you do it in your, in your hours that you're awake, and when you're heedless, the praise of Allah still exists. And Allah is dropping a hint that you should become a people that are constantly praising Allah. And if you do that, it starts affecting the way you think. And that's the point I really want to make. If someone praises Allah a lot, it's not just an exercise on your tongue and mind. It starts affecting the way you and I think. We start thinking about everything, and we start seeing Allah's work. We start seeing Allah's hand in everything around us. We don't see it like that. You're not going to be able to see it like that if you don't do a lot of hamd and tasbih, and you and I don't do that. But if we do that, it will start changing. Because in the beginning of the surah, Allah made a complaint. He said, يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا They only know the outside of worldly life. They only see the surface level. But the person of hamd and tasbih, he starts seeing something nobody else sees. And those are the things I want to share with you today, these beautiful ayat. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, and I'll skip a little bit. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ أَنْتُمْ ثُمَّ إِذَا أَنْتُمْ بَشَرٌ تَنْتَشِرُونَ And from His miraculous signs is that He made you from dirt. And all of a sudden you are human beings, skin, you know, flesh-carrying human beings that are just all over the world. You're spread out. The surah began with two great empires, two great powers. Who the Arabs were, if you compare them to the Arabs, the Arabs are ants compared to the, the Roman and the Persian powers of that time. But Allah Azza wa Jalla reminds and He says, think about it, these great superpowers, but they're all made of just dirt. They're nothing. They're, what power is this? These, they reach these great heights, but their beginnings are just like your own beginnings, they're just made from dirt. And Turab is something the Arab would think about a lot because he's in what kind of climate? He's in the desert, dirt is all around him. So all he sees is dirt. And he wonders, this human being came from there. We don't even think that. We don't even think like that when, we, when you know, a huge mass of people, all of us sitting here, every one of our lives is a miracle from Allah because there's all, all this dirt you and I trample on and that's the same ingredient from which you and I were made. Just think, thinking about that. Now for a believer who does this me, alhamdulillah, even walking on dirt is going to be different. They're going to be walking on dirt and they're going to be thinking, this is what Allah made me from. 
It changes the way they think. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا What an incredible ayah. And out of his miraculous signs, this is from Allah's miracle, miraculous gifts, that he created for you from your own people, from your own selves, an extension of your own selves, your spouses, your wives and husbands. And here, from the very beginning, from Adam alayhi salam came our mother Allah salam alayhi From him, from his rib, she came. And Allah says, from your own selves, Allah made your spouses. But He didn't just say He made your spouses, He says, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So that, so Allah gave you a wife, so that all of you can find peace and tranquility and calm in them. So you could head towards them to calm down. You have a long day at work. You're behind on your project. There's cuts at the office and they're going to be announcing layoffs next week. There's stress on your head. Business isn't going well. Tax season is around the corner. Customers aren't coming through the door. You got all these problems. You got all these disturbances. And then you get home and you just sit down with the wife for five minutes and everything goes away. You just say, she's running around doing her work. You say to her, no, just, just sit down with you for a couple minutes. Do what? No, I gotta, I gotta make the tea, I gotta do this, I gotta, no, just, just two minutes, just sit down. I just wanna sit down next to you. That's it. And you sit down with her for two minutes and all her stress disappears. Now the next time you just spend a couple of minutes with your wife and your stress disappears, know something. That didn't happen because of your wife or because of you. Oh, this is one of the miracles of Allah. Allah takes credit for that. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا The next time you're just sitting, just spending time with your wife. You know, and there's a disturbance. You know, husband and wife, when they don't spend time with each other, they're in a bad mood. They become upset. And when they spend a little bit of time together, you know, sometimes it happens when husband's working late at night, and he doesn't come home. Or he comes home and he's working on his desk, he passes out on the desk, he doesn't even go to sleep in bed. He wakes up disturbed, she wakes up disturbed. They both wake up disturbed. Allah Azza wa made the night time a time to find peace with your spouse. And this is part of what makes us function. This is what makes us function, to find peace in our spouse. To spend time with them. And this is one of the miracles of Allah that Allah takes credit for, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you and I aren't making the effort, we're not making the effort to find peace in our marriage, we're not making that effort, then we're not appreciating a miracle of Allah. Because the min ayatihi in the beginning of the ayah, you know what that tells you? It tells you it is only from his miracles. This does not have anything to do with anything else. The only credit that can go is to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And he installed among you, between both of you, mawadda, an extreme form of love. When you in the middle of your work day just send your wife a text message, I miss you. Just do that. That is a that is a miracle of Allah. When she writes back, I don't miss you, I feel <laughs> But you know that these are these are from the things Allah put inside the heart. This is what Allah put inside. And dismissing that is dismissing one of the ayat of Allah. This is an ayat of Allah. That Allah put extreme love between husband and wife. Mawadda. I would. In Arabiya, would is love. Would is strong love. But mawadda, mustabimi they call it, is extreme love. It's overwhelming love for the spouse, for the husband to have it for the wife, and the wife to have it for the husband. This goes both ways. You know? This goes both ways. Wa rahmah. And then the, the word rahma is something that deserves a lot of attention. The word rahma comes from the Arabic word rahim, which is the womb of the mother. The womb of the mother is the same word origin for the word rahma. And the word rahma, uh, as I came to read recently, I really appreciate it. The word rahma, as we normally translate, we translate it as mercy. But mercy in the English language is completely different, or it doesn't really give the picture of what rahma is in Arabic. Because we say, for example, the king showed him mercy. In English, we say the king showed mercy. You know what that means? The king didn't punish him. Or the cop pulled me over, but he showed me mercy. That means he was about to give me a ticket, but he let me go. Or we say the soldiers went into the village and they didn't show any mercy, meaning they didn't spare anybody. Except they showed mercy to this one guy, meaning they didn't kill him. In other words, usually we think of mercy in the English language as didn't punish. Didn't punish. 
But rahmah in the Arabic language is to take care from all sides. How is a baby taken care of inside the belly of a mother? It's food, it's shelter, climate control, air conditioning, food and drink, clean up afterwards, no rent to pay. And if there's any pain, any suffering, it's the mother that's going through it. So that the child is completely taken care of. It's entire world. That belly is the entire world of that child at that point. It doesn't know any other world. When Allah calls Himself Rahim, that means Allah takes care of every one of our needs out of love. And it's mercy which we have to kind of, because of the limitations of the language, we have to say, but it includes an extreme form of taking care, of loving, loving someone and out of that love to take care of them. Allah Azza wa says, Allah put that in your marriage, that you want to take care of your wife out of love. You know what does that mean? Instead of reading an, like a, a grammatical tafsir of that, simple, you go to the restaurant with a couple of your friends, you order some food, and immediately a thought comes, my wife likes that salad, I should get that for her. That's rahmah. You don't come back home and you give her the leftovers, hey, I got you something. No, 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 that's not rahmah. Rahmah is you're thinking of someone, you want to take care of them, you want to go out of, their, out of your way to help them. You notice the wife has a headache. So you don't say, okay, I'll get you some medicine. Because if you say, okay, I'll get you some medicine, she says, no, 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 don't go. And then you say, okay, I won't go. You know? Just go and get it. Just get it. And give it to her. This is Rahmah. Allah says, He put that between husband and wife. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ And that's the last part I wanted to highlight for you in these four or five minutes. لَكُمْ There are one of the big crises of, of the world today is that the world is, is suffering from war. So the world is suffering from war. This surah also began with the mention of a war. It began with the mention of a war. And war happens when there is no peace. That's a very simple equation. When there's no peace, there is war. But when Allah Azza wa mentions peace in this surah, He mentions peace between husband and wife. So war is between two great nations. Persians and the Romans, and pieces between the husband and the wife. Why? Why does Allah mention this? It's a, something to reflect on. You know, our my personal peace comes from my marriage. And that, that it's not something I made, Allah put that in it. And when I am at peace, then I will be at peace with others also. When I am disturbed, my disturbance will, you know, it will come out of me, it will emanate from me, I'm going to give off a bad vibe, and I'm going to start fights at the office too. When I'm not at peace myself, I don't let others around me be at peace. And when I'm at peace, other people come to me and they say, you're so calm, how do I become like you? How, you know, I just, when I'm around you, I just calm down. I'm so much at rest, I'm so much at peace. You know, a lot of, a lot of uh, subhanAllah, a lot of massages across the country, when the, when the brothers sit down for shura, there's a lot of arguing. And you won't be surprised to find that in those homes, there's a lot of arguing too. When there's no peace at home, it makes its way to the masjid, it makes its way to the office, it makes its way everywhere outside. When there's peace inside the home, peace comes outside of the home. It's infectious. So Allah Azza wa just gave us the starting point, peaceful homes. Peaceful homes, that's the starting point. And you would think that's oversimplistic. It's not. The cities that have the greatest crime in the world are the cities that have the most broken homes. Do the statistical studies yourself. Read, read up on it. The all, you know, there, there, there was this judge in Brooklyn, I'm fascinated. He wrote this book about how to end juvenile delinquency in America. Because a lot of youth are ending up in violent crime. Gangs and robberies and, you know, assaults and all this kind of stuff. That the youth are, and he's 40 years he's been dealing with youth going to jail. So he writes this book about how to end crime among the youth in America. And his number one solution is, we cannot afford to have single, single parent homes. We have all these broken homes where the son doesn't have a father figure, or there's a dad who's distant and the mom's doing her own thing and there's no parenting in the house, there's no peace in that house, <coughs> then that child resorts to violent behavior and finds bad influences and it permeates and, and it perpetuates and perpetuates until it eventually turns into chaos in society. SubhanAllah. The starting point of it is peace at home. In all of that, there are miraculous signs. There are really a lot to think about it. Well, 
In it, there are lots of lessons, lots of miracles. In one marriage, there are lots of lessons to learn. There are lots of miracles of Allah. That feeling, and some of you, alhamdulillah, are married for a long time, some of you recently got married. When you get married, it's like for the first time, you turn to your wife and say, man, it's like I can think for the first time. It was like this cloud. And it just poof, it disappeared. I have clarity in my life. You know, I have this peace I've never felt before. This is what marriage does. And that is a divine gift. That is a gift from Allah. That we're supposed to use to our advantage and then help with, use that to become better parents, to become better neighbors, to become better citizens of a country, to become better business people, better employers. It spreads from there. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ The last bit I want to share with you, and I'll we'll end this khutbah because I have about one minute left, is the word zawj itself in the Arabic language. Zawj in the Arabic language is necessarily means part of a pair. One part of two. Which means one zawj by itself is incomplete. You are not complete until the other half is there. Okay? And for example, Ayatayn Allah says that He made it zawj also. That the night and the day are a zawj. You can't have a day with just night, you can't have a day with just day. And that's something Allah Azza wa even talks about in the surah. What if night became permanent and you never saw day? What if day became permanent and you never saw night? You wouldn't be disturbed. You wouldn't be able to sustain life on this planet. And the same way, if our spouse is our zawj, that means we have to think of her as another, our, our, literally our other half. We're no, longer, we're no longer one person and she's one person. We are together one person. We have to think like one. We have to be concerned like one. What I love for myself, I have to love for her. What I hate for myself, I have to hate for her. And she has to do the same for me. That's what we have to become. That's when you experience the miracle of Allah in this beautiful creation. So the Muslims are told, don't wait until Badr, when you see the miraculous victory of Allah, to experience the miracles of Allah. You can experience that miracle in every one of your marriages. In every single one of your marriages. May Allah Azza wa make our marriages the ayat of Allah that they're supposed to be. May Allah Azza wa give us patience towards, towards our wife, and give our wives patience towards their husbands. Barakallahu wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikri kaheem. الحمد لله وكفاء والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المسلمين كتابا